welcome to Western Reserve United Methodist Church. By any chance, are there any visitors with us this morning? I will move on to um, some announcements. Most of them, you will notice, are in your bulletin. And please check them out because there are quite a few events coming up this week and others throughout the remainder of the month of October. So be sure to mark those on your calendar. And I want to remind everyone that this Thursday, glasses on, the uh, Western Reserve United Women in Faith invite you to join us. The luncheon and program is Thursday at noon in Fellowship Hall. And after lunch, Mark Weir will give a presentation on his mission trip to Romania. Lunch will be provided, and all women are welcome. Please bring a friend. If you could please stand now for the call to worship. Oh, I'm sorry. <laughs> it's your turn. again. All right. If everyone could please stand if you're able for the call to worship. Welcome to God's house, a place of faith. Seeking God's word. Here you will find nourishment and hope. May we learn lessons of courage and peace. Here you will find rest from your struggles. Lord, prepare our hearts to receive your words, that we may leave this holy house of faith and return to our homes, encouraged and challenged to be your people. Amen.
could you remain standing for the unison prayer? Lord, from the mountaintop in ancient Israel, you gave your people ways in which to live in harmony with all creation. As time has progressed, the power of those words seems to have faded in our lives, and we often succumb to base temptations of power and greed. Bring us back to your words of compassion and hope offered to all creation by your Son, Jesus. Open our hearts to receive your love and your direction in our lives. Amen. Doesn't look like we have any young people today for a children's message. So we'll move right along to our joys and in prayers. It's that time of the service. Um, I'll start. I have a joy, actually two joys. On this Tuesday, the 10th, my husband Doug and I will be celebrating our 25th anniversary. So, and I know there's another. Is it all right if I say? Okay, go ahead. Congratulations. And my other joy is yesterday I heard from a very, very dear friend who I had lost touch with. You know how that happens sometimes. And when that reconnection occurs, it brings such joy. And of course, we made promises that we will not let that happen again and let so much time go by. So that's two joys for me. Um, are there any other joys out there or concerns at this time? Good morning, friends. I bring to you greetings from our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. And welcome each and every one of you. Our offerings will now be received for the work of the Lord in this church and community.
Let us pray. Washed in your peace and love, O oh God, we bring our gifts to you. Bless the gifts and the lives that they represent, that all may be used in your service and to your glory. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. The first of our two readings this morning is Psalm 19. The heavens declare the glory of God. The skies proclaim the work of his hands. Day after day, they pour forth speech. Night after night, they reveal knowledge. They have no speech. They use no words. No sound is heard from them. 
yet their voice goes out into all the earth, their words to the ends of the world. In the heavens, God has pitched a tent for the sun. It is like a bridegroom coming out of his chamber, like a champion rejoicing to run his course. It rises at one end of the heavens and makes its circuit to the other. Nothing is deprived of its warmth. The law of the Lord is perfect, refreshing the soul. The statutes of the Lord are trustworthy, making wise the simple. The precepts of the Lord are right, giving joy to the heart. The commands of the Lord are radiant, giving light to the eyes. The fear of the Lord is pure, enduring forever. The decrees of the Lord are firm, and all of them are righteous. They are more precious than gold, than much pure gold. They are sweeter than honey, than honey from the honeycomb. By them your servant is warned, in keeping them there is great reward. But who can discern their own errors? Forgive my hidden faults. Keep your servant also from willful sins. May they not rule over me. Then I will be blameless, innocent of great transgression. May these words of my mouth and this meditation of my heart be pleasing in your sight, Lord, my rock and my redeemer. And if you are able, please stand for the gospel reading. It is Romans chapter 12, verses 1 through 11. Therefore, I urge you, brothers and sisters, in view of God's mercy, to offer your bodies as a living sacrifice, holy and pleasing to God. This is your true and proper worship. Do not conform to the pattern of this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind. Then you'll be able to test and approve what God's will is, his good, pleasing, and perfect will. For by the grace given me, I say to every one of you, do not think of yourself more highly than you ought, but rather think of yourself with sober judgment in accordance with the faith God has distributed to each of you. For just as each of us has one body with many members, and these members do not all have the same function, so we in Christ, though many, form one body, and each member belongs to all the others. We have different gifts according to the grace given to each of us. If your gift is prophesying, then prophecy in accordance with your faith. If it is serving, then serve. If it is teaching, then teach. If it is to encourage, then give encouragement. If it is giving, then give generously. If it is to lead, do it diligently. If it is to show mercy, do it cheerfully. Love must be sincere. Hate what is evil, cling to what is good. Be devoted to one another in love. Honor one another above yourselves. Never be lacking in zeal, but keep your spiritual fervor serving the Lord. The word of God for the people of God.
Please be seated. <clears throat> Let us pray. Lord, speak to me that I may speak. Open our ears, our minds, and our hearts to receive your word. Holy Spirit, illumine us. Amen. Our theme this morning is about service. And our text explores what it means to serve God wholeheartedly, devoted, enthusiastic, and on fire for God. A fully devoted heart is vital for every disciple of Jesus. Serving the Lord should be one of the greatest joys, being a part of the mission that propagates the gospel. We need to be passionate about serving the Lord or God. And we can never forget the words of Joshua when he said, As for me and my house, we will serve the Lord. Like Joshua, we must lead our households in serving the Lord wholeheartedly. God has done much for us by giving us promises that will help us fulfill our purpose. Exodus chapter 23 verses 25 through 28 encourages us to serve the Lord and it also outlines promises that are attached to serving God. And I encourage you to read that Exodus passage for yourselves. Job reiterates obedience in serving God and added the promise that if they obey and serve God, they shall spend their days in prosperity and their years in pleasure. Job 36, verse 11. We serve God by serving others also. Our Lord Jesus gave us a great example of humility and servant leadership by washing his disciples' feet. In John 15, he specifically advised his disciples to do the same thing and told them further that they will be blessed if they obey and do the same thing. We follow Jesus' example of humble servant leadership, serving others as an act of love. And it's all contained in Matthew 25. Serve your God in your life, in your church, with your talents, your time, your prayers, your financial support. Serve God by serving others. How many times have we asked God to do something for us and perhaps forgot to ask God, what we can do for him. We can apply this to our lives as disciples of Jesus by asking what we can do for God. Not only what God can do for us. Our God can do all things, but we also need to serve. Our service to the Lord is not a mere transaction. It is an act of commitment, and it is a way of showing our love for God because of who God is. Some people may find themselves, they may feel inadequate or useless. There's no such thing. These individuals feel as if they do not have anything significant to offer in ministry. They may believe that they personally are not qualified to serve. But our calling to serve is synchronous with our conversion when we have made the decision 
to accept Christ and live and follow him. It is compelling. First Peter chapter 4, verse 10 reads, As each one has received a gift, minister it to one another as good stewards of the manifold grace of God. Realize that God equips those God calls to serve. And past hurts should not deter us like what Hebrew 10, 24 tells us. And let us consider one another in order to stir up love and good works, my friends. Let us be mindful that hurt people can hurt people, but we cannot let that get in the way of serving God. We were redeemed to produce good works. There is no perfect church, a church that is all it ought to be, a church where members never stray beyond the straight and narrow way. A church that has no empty pews, whose pastor never has the blues. A church where every single person is hospitable and kind, where gossips never peddle lies or make complaints or criticize unjustly. Where all are always sweet and kind, and all to others' faults are blind. Such perfect churches there may be, but none of them are known to us. But still, we will work and pray and plan the best way we can. There must be a commitment to support the ministries of the church. Support the ministry with your attendance, with your giving, with your service. Our church and our community need your support. Every man shall give as he is able, according to the blessing of the Lord your God, which he has given you. Each of you must bring a gift that will show how much the Lord your God has blessed you. And we all are blessed to be a blessing to others. The point is this, whoever sows sparingly will also reap sparingly. And whoever sows bountifully will also reap bountifully. Each one must give as he has decided in his heart, not reluctantly or under compulsion. For God loves a cheerful giver. There must be a commitment to share the message of the gospel. Jesus came and spoke to them saying, all authority has been given to me in heaven and on earth. Go, therefore, and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit, teaching them to observe all things that I have commanded you. And lo, I am with you always even to the end of the age. Amen. The mission of the church to evangelize is not to be done only with the four walls, but in the highways and byways of life. I'm sure we all have learned this. It has been said that we have focused too much on preaching the gospel behind the closed doors of churches. And if we look at the early church, they gathered together to become equipped to go out and proclaim the good news of the gospel, making disciples of others. 
teaching those disciples to replicate that activity of making disciples. We must carry the message wherever the lost are, whether in the church or outside the church, to every creature who does not know Christ. We must be committed to sharing the message and the mission of Jesus Christ. Someone says that in the Great Commission, the Lord has called us to be like Peter, fishers of men. We have turned the commission around so that we have become merely keeps of the aquarium. Occasionally, I take some fish out of your fish bowl and put them in mine. And you do the same with my bowl. But we are all tending the same fish and of coat. An effective member of the body of Christ is committed to honor God, to honor God's church, and to build God's church together. Committed to love and serve one another as leaders, as members of the church and the community. Committed to support the ministries of the church. Committed to share the message of the church of Jesus Christ. I would like to encourage us to ask God what we can do for God. It is possible that some of us are not sure of what area we can best serve God. We can serve God in the church, at work, as street evangelists, in our family, or as missionaries. You do not have to be an expert in any of these areas, but whichever area God is leading you to serve, please commit to it, and God will equip you to do God's work. So my friends, the first step to take in serving the Lord is to give your life to God if you have not yet done so. Believe that Jesus is the Son of God and confess your sins to him. Ask him to give you the power to sin no more. Ask God to lead you to any area God would like you to serve and be committed and passionate about serving God. We were made to build the church. God made each one of us with unique talents, personalities, and skill sets. And when we invite Jesus into our lives, we are given at least one spiritual gift. We get the most joy and the biggest difference when we use our God-given talents, gifts, and abilities to build the church. Serving allows us to discover and to develop our spiritual gifts. 1 Corinthians 12 compares the church to a human body. Just like our bodies are made of many parts serving specific functions, the church is made up of people with different skills and abilities. Alone, these pieces are not very useful, but together, together, we can create something beautiful for God. We can do it. Do not run away. We can do this together. And serving allows us to experience miracles. In John chapter 2, Jesus was at a wedding. We all know that story. And the couple was running out of wine for their guests. Jesus tells the servants, 
to fill several big jars to the brim when they served the water to the guests. It was wine. The guests never knew what happened. The servants were the ones who witnessed the miracle. The same is true for us when we serve. Serving allows us to experience the joy and peace that come from obedience. 1 Peter 4, 10 and 11 says, Each of you should use whatever gift you have received to serve others as faithful stewards of God's grace in its various forms. So that in all things, God may be praised through Jesus Christ. Service. Serving is a form of worship, a way to express gratitude for what Jesus has done for us and to share the love and grace we have been given. Serving helps us to be more like Jesus. We shift our focus off ourselves unto others through serving. We begin to see others as Jesus sees them. Not as I see people, but just as Jesus sees them. And what next happens is that we see Jesus in others. We see Jesus in others. When we, f when we serve, we find ourselves surrounded with other Christians who can help us follow Jesus. When we are working side by side with other people, just as I have been seeing with the small groups, the groups that come together, whether to sew, whether in choir, whether helping hands, whether um, um, the meals that we served last week. So when we work together, there is something that is inevitable that happens. I hope you know what that is. What happens is that a bond is formed. A bond is formed. This was part of God's plan for how the church is supposed to work. That is why Hebrews 10, 24, and 25 instructs us to spur one another on toward love and good deeds. Not giving up meeting together, but encouraging one another. Serving increases our faith. As we move out of our comfort zones, God increases our faith by revealing new potential in, us, in ourselves and in God's church. When we see what God can do when God's power is at work within us, we begin looking for the doors God is opening rather than pushing our way through the ones that God has closed. Serving allows us to experience God's presence in new ways. Encouragement and healing go hand in hand. As we encourage others and define healing, we too are encouraged. Many people who go on mission trips say that they came home feeling like they got more than they ever gave. Serving is good 
for your soul. And studies have shown that volunteering is so good for the mind and body that it can ease symptoms of stress and depression. Tapping into our gifts and passions builds self-confidence, energy, and strength. Serving others can also be the best distraction from our own worries, though that's not why we should serve. We make all sorts of rational explanations for not serving. I don't have the time. I don't know what I would do, what I should be doing. I don't have any special skills to contribute. They don't need me. Friends, know this. Each one of us has different gifts. And God has a purpose for each and every one of us. If you are unsure and seeking direction as to where God is calling you to serve, please come and let's talk about it and pray about it because you are going to find joy and a sense of peace and fulfillment in your life by un understanding who you are in Jesus Christ. And at the same time, you will be used by God to build up God's church and help it grow in addition to building the kingdom of God. Let us be prayerful, discerning, obedient to God's calling, thankful and joyful. God calls you and me to play our role in the building of God's kingdom. We are called to be servants to others and servants to God. We are called to sacrifice our wants, our desires, our positions in order to serve God and our neighbor. God is calling us to make our lives a sign of God's power in this world. God is calling us to serve God with our entire lives, to be the Christ in this world, to be the light of hope, to be the instruments of justice, love, and mercy in this world. God is calling us to servanthood, to give of ourselves, and God will use you to be a blessing to others. Let us commit or recommit ourselves to be faithful and joyful servants in this church, community, and the world. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. We will now have our prayers and anyone who would like to commit or recommit themselves or have things to pray about, if you have concerns, and even the celebration of our joys, it would be good if you come to the altar for prayer.
your cares upon the Lord. Come, come. So, oh, loving God, we pause to worship and adore you and to respond yes to you as you receive us as we are. Take us, O oh Lord, and clean us off. In our trying times, we come to you because you invite us to come to you because we know that you are all-powerful and uplifting. Help us, O oh God. We ask you to remind us that you are the Lord of Lords and that we can lean on your everlasting arms. Remind us and the world that Jesus Christ is alive today. Help us to continue to have faith so that the mountains in our lives may be removed. To continue to respond to your goodness and your love. And to respond to those who are in need. So this morning we come and stand in the gap in prayer for those who are bereaved, who are mourning the loss of their loved ones. And we pray your comfort and peace and strength to them, for them. We pray for those who are ailing at home. We pray for Steve and Lee and her family and Joyce and her family, and Judy, and Terry. We pray for those who are in recovery, whether in hospital or in rehab, those in strife, separation, or divorce. We pray for your healing power upon them all that you will continue to touch them in a very special way, O oh God. O oh God, we bring to you our joys as well. We offer our gratitudes and praise and thanksgiving for the joy of family, the joy of union made. We heard this morning there is the celebration of two couples in this church, right here, right now, celebrating your blessings upon their lives. So we ask you to continue to protect them and to strengthen their love and union as together in a family they praise you. Oh God, in your spirit of joy, we offer all these things, illuminating our way and guiding our lives. For it is in all things that we pray in the name of Christ Jesus who taught us to pray. Our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory forever. Amen.
the benediction, go bravely and boldly into this world of confusion and pain. Bring God's healing words of love and forgiveness. Know the power of mercy and grace in your life and use those wonderful gifts to serve God and God's people. Go in peace and let the light of God shine on you and through you. Amen.